Hello, I will explain how to use this combination of a micro time 100 and a few time 300 system. So the system consists of, of pulsed lasers, which are in this laser combining unit here. So this laser combining unit has actually two optical fibers that deliver the light to the system. So the one optical fiber is basically if you want to measure in a cuvette in a classical uh, fluid time measurement, then you get the light here. On the other hand, you can measure via the microscope, then the light is delivered in this fiber and then focused here below the objective on the sample. Uh, to switch between the two possibilities, you can move the slider up and down. So slider down means the light goes directly to the fluid time. Slider up means the light is basically uh, getting uh, focused into the fiber that goes to the microscope. So the fluorescence that is collected here is actually focused into this fiber. And from there, this fiber is actually delivered into some kind of fiber drawer. So inside there's just the open fiber end, which is, and the fluorescence that is actually transmitted through this fiber is from there focused onto the grating and from there onto the detector. So that means that if you're using the microscope stage, you're basically using the detector of the fluid time and the grating of the fluid time. The laser and the detector and the grating are completely controlled via the fluid time and that means via the EasyTau software, while the microscope scanning and recording is controlled via the uh, SymphoTime software, which means that both softwares need to be open and you can work with the system in two ways. You can either set the grating to a certain wavelength and then use the easy towel to scan the flim images or you can use the simple time just in order to position the stage and then use the functionality of the easy towel in order to make let's say emission spectra at one certain position or stress spectra so in this case you in there you're flexible the first thing that you always need to do is to um, um, focus the sample and so select the region to measure. So here I've put on a, a daisy pollen slide and this is easiest to, to, to focus with a bright field um, and, and the ocular. In order to do that, I basically have to take this slider out. Then I remove the mirror and open the beam pass to the ocular. By moving this mirror here, I also um, disconnect the laser from the system so that therefore it is, it is laser safe to watch in here. So the lamp you can turn on here and here you can actually set the intensity of the transmission lamp. So I will just look now through the ocular and focus the sample to where I think it's, I, I, I get a good focus. So after I finished, I first switch off the lamp and then we turn back to the confocal beam path. Now everything is prepared here and we can actually do the measurement in the SymphoTime software. Okay, now I have placed a sample on the stage and to measure it we need to operate the EasyTau as well as the SymphoTime software. So I start both. When we start the SymphoTime software, it's important that all the hardware is actually switched on, especially the scanner. So the hardware is initialized for the flu time as well as for the SymphoTime. And then we have to create first a workspace or to open one. So the software knows where to store the data. So I'll make these windows a little bit smaller so that we can work with both softwares in parallel. So in the EasyTau software we will need mainly the customized mode. So we first select the laser. The 510 nanometer laser is already turned on so we can just enable it, close this window and then 
go to the, the detection element. So the emission attenuator I will put to 100%. The emission polarizer position does not matter. It is important that it is physically out of the beam path because the polarization information is anyway lost in the multi-mode fiber. So the only thing the polarizer would do would actually um, attenuate the uh, detection light. So we have to remove it physically in the fluid time. The emission monochromator I set to the right detection wavelength. So here let's set it to 550 nanometers. I open the slit completely for the measurement and then I open the shutter. So now the system is actually ready to go from the detection side. Now we have to define the image uh, parameters. So first I'll make a quick overall image with a fast scanning time and a low pixel number so that we can just get a rough idea about how the sample is placed on the stage and in order to select uh, the region that we actually want to observe. So here you can already see in this preview the daisy point flower a little bit accelerated. So after the image acquisition has finished, so now we have a quick overview of the daisy point and now we can select the region that is actually interesting for us. So for example here and now I switch to the accurate mode with a higher pixel number and a longer dwell time. I will still reduce it to 2 milliseconds to keep the recording not too long. So at the moment we have calculated roughly 5 minutes acquisition time. With these settings so I can switch to measurement and then just give the sample a suited name. And as the parameters for the measurement are not transferred from the flu time to the SUMFO time, I will just write here the emission and excitation wavelength. I can also put some other information. So this is actually stored then in the raw data file. Okay, then I can start. So in the measurement mode, you see we have on top the image. On the lower left we can see the decay and on the lower right the intensity over time. We can adjust the intensity scale and also the lifetime scale in order to enhance any contrasts that are in the image. So we can already see beautiful little pollen here and uh, you can see that in the image there are some lifetime contrasts. If I adapt the color scale correspondingly. Well, this color scale actually shows just the mean arrival time of the photons, which we call fast flim uh, calculation. So it's actually not a real fitting, but just um, a preview that gives some, uh, some idea about the lifetime contrast. So here we see the intensity fluctuations while the scanner is just moving the sample through the excitation beam. So the intensities we have here are still low enough that we don't have to worry about uh, too high count rates that would falsify the lifetimes that we get. It's the so-called pile-up effect. You can see nicely the form of the daisy pollen flower here. And this is actually the simplest way of using the flu time together with the micro time. So you basically just use the grating to set a certain emission wavelength.
So after the acquisition, we could get more details, for example, by increasing the number of pixels. So the largest the wide range scanner can do is 1024 by 1024 pixels. And the area that we scan here at the moment is a few millimeters. If you go here to settings and to the hardware setup, you can actually edit the limits the scanner can do. You see at the moment it's restricted to one by one centimeter. The maximum range that we can get is an operation range of 10 by 7 um, centimeters. So you have to subtract the acceleration and deceleration range. But it's usually a good idea to, if you have a sample of a certain size, to just limit the scan range of the scanner because then it's uh, easier to pre-position it and you don't need to look for the sample and the scanner position for already so it's already predefined a little bit. Okay now we have several possibilities to continue. We can for example take the same area, change here the, the grating and uh, of the emission monochromator and we take another image with a different um, emission wavelength and get a series of images acquired at different emission wavelengths, so some kind of time-resolved emission uh, imaging. Or we could go to a certain position and try to record some kind of uh, spectrum here. So, so for the second possibility we can define, let's say, a point here in the image and use the functionality of the EasyTau software to uh, acquire, for example, a lifetime curve at this position. Or you could combine it with a trace image or you could take a steady state spectrum, for example, here we sc could scan for, for example, for 530 to 620 nanometers and just record an emission spectrum at that position. Depending on what you want to do, you could can therefore use either the easy tau or the simple time functionality and the analysis of the data depends uh, also then which software you used for the recording and you can use the functionality of these software packages and also the explanation of the analysis is then continued in the tutorials that you can find on the PicoCoin web page.